Hello and welcome to the Gauntlet Podcast. I am Zach. This is Dom. I am Dom. And this week we are doing Netflix original movie came out last week called The Gray Man. Now, I want to start off by describing this movie in two words. Two words. My words are cash grab. Cash grab. Dom, what are your words? I'm going to do this one word here. Um, it's spineless. spineless. In the sense that there's no structure to the name thing. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Ah, yeah. So we're going to do things a little differently this week. Because this movie was so atrocious, we are, going to, we are going to breeze through yeah. our general outline yeah. and just hit those points real quick. Then we're going to go back. And we're going to tell you and talk about why this movie was so bad. Because we don't just want to sit here and be like, oh, it's bad, bad, bad. We want to explain why we thought it was bad. Like the why. Exactly. Exactly. And when we do that, I can go, I'll I'll pull up the comments from other people too. And like Rotten Tomatoes. Because there's, I I looked through and there's some interesting ones. So first, (laughs) let's start out. So, okay. General movie breakdown. Yeah. Uh, No. No for me. Definitely no. Okay. Um, let's see what's next after that Where, where's my list character development um, character development yeah terrible no did it happen you know there were characters I, there's, I, I, there's I a rumor that faceless... the script wasn't even finished yet and that they just made it anyway no. <laughs> I, was, I, was say, I believe it I, I totally uh, yeah me it. too in um, Tagus, pro... um no wait in a Tagus, minute Tagus, Tagus, breakdown no <laughs> um acting okay but I've got to be honest. I wasn't even really. I wasn't impressed with at all. Chris Evans. No, the way his character was written left nothing. Because he was really good at Knives Out as a bad exactly, guy. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah. in this one, he just could. Uh, he could I, do it. But it was I've seen him in a lot of movies, like, of course, including his Captain America movies. Right. But like other movies where he was different characters. Yeah. And, like Knives Out, he was a bad guy. Yeah. Um, gifted. Um, there was a few other ones. I've Fantastic Four. Before. That was a good one. The old one. <laughs> no. Yeah. Like. Like he's like so they left like so that that just says the writing of the character was so bad there was like right. nothing on the table for he couldn't to do. save it I bet he, he couldn't save really it really hard probably exactly okay <laughs> cinematography nothing to speak of yeah I can't um script writing oh my gosh I'm sorry what was their script writing did they um, try exactly music uh actually no i didn't like I it didn't at all. notice any i didn't like, notice the music it. i did notice i didn't like because yeah, it was it so weird. it was it generic. was so disjointed that, that should have been my word generic there this you go it did nothing that actually lines up with some of the comments on uh, okay Tomatoes, see so. this is good at least it yes. shows that i'm in line with a normal person i'm not as crazy yeah. yes oh actually well there's there's some there's a, there's something sad there too okay oh. Okay. To be okay. soon revealed. Okay, um, I'm, okay. I'm intrigued. Meaning. Meaning. Uh, no, there nope. was like no meaning there. There was no um, meaning. Okay, this is going to be a fun one. Movie comparison. Okay, so this we can compare to other Netflix originals. Yes. Um, I'm going to say this was probably the worst Netflix original I've ever seen. Since Red Notice. Yes. <laughs> and that's saying something because I have yeah. never liked any Netflix originals. They've all been sorely you know, lacking. The first thing I said after I, sh- I, I, I didn't finish it um then you get to after lloyd died as so soon as there lloyd was like, died there was like 10 minutes left if, because maybe. let's be honest the only thing saving this movie was the and by a thread mind you because there was no relationship between them was this fight between lloyd and six right which you knew was gonna come but right. there was nothing there's no build up. up to it there's yeah. no also my dog is snoring holy crap um uh, there's no <laughs> there's no dopamine build up no like y- y- you don't even not... care it's about to happen when right. it happens even when they're introduced oh we'll get into that later point being i shut it off right as soon as he died because i was okay what like... you missed was actually really dumb so okay i figured she forces um the lady who was lloyd's hand Suzanne. yeah i don't know for- why i know her. <laughs> she saves six's life because he's bleeding out after the fight okay and forces him to work for them now and she has the girl she has claire so if he doesn't do what they want they're gonna hurt claire and then, of course, it ends with her and Carmichael going to the facility where they keep they're keeping six. And of course, they open the door; the guys are dead. Six has escaped, and then it goes to the house where Claire's being kept, and he saves her, and they drive off. And Claire's the little girl. After yes, the okay. nephew, uh, the niece of um, Fitz Fitzroy. Okay, Fitzroy. Old, fit or Fitz, whatever his name is. The they call him Gerald. They call them Fitz or Fitzroy. Let me look at the cast list. Oh, sorry, um, that's not the dog. That's my brother weed eating. 
Oh, that's a really irregular breath. I was gonna check on the dog. They don't. They don't have <laughs> his name of the character he plays on Rotten Tomatoes. All they have is that it was Billy Bob Thornton, the actor. Interesting. Maybe anyway. he didn't play his name. Well, we'll call him Fitz because that's what they called the movie. So anyway, yeah, okay. Definitely. Now we're going to go <laughs> in depth why this movie Break was down so why. so bad. So to start off, this movie's script writing, mm-hmm. like you said, spineless. It had like okay, so no I, this is gonna be fun. I want to go into so I, I was keeping track He's got a lot of notes. the plot points. Yeah. So the first plot point that I found was when Six decides, or not decides. Um, he when he hears that they have on the phone, they have the niece. Yeah, fits his niece. So that's not the first plot point. But then it cuts to him looking for a pacemaker. He looking for a pacemaker because he's decided to go save her. Yeah, and that was kind of the first plot point. It was kind of underexplained in the sense that it wasn't very direct. Right. I guess. And that's the um, thing. It's like if you can have if you're gonna have a first plot point, the character should it should be unquestionable what the character is doing. Yeah, yep. like so because yes. six doesn't have a story worthy mission until this point. Well, yes. if you want to call it story worthy, right. um, so he decides to take action and to go save her. So yeah. he 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 goes to the that dude's apartment and he says, "Look for this number of pacemaker because he's right. trying to find her." And so that's the first plot point. Midpoint, I would say, is when six and Miranda go to see Maggie in Prague and she decrypts the files and explains that Carmichael is of course a bad guy and he's using the CIA as his own personal hit squad and that somebody above is pulling strings like a shadow government. No way. Oh my goodness. This has been done all the time. That's the case. So So, yeah, me and me and my roommate were watching this and we were literally talking about what was wrong with it the entire time um and especially those moments when when the bad guy reveals by talking on the phone with that lady she's like oh so you're gonna tell them that you're the one who orchestrated all this or something and i was like yeah i i knew that already yeah of course is that a big reveal like come on exactly i'm like be a little less typical please like try yeah you know yeah i don't know um it's just ridiculous. And then, okay, this is this is the one that breaks the camel's back completely. Actually, no, this is the one that cuts the camel in half. Oh, like, it doesn't just break its back. Whoa! The okay. second plot okay. point that I I was scouring it, you know, pausing, looking at the timeline, making yeah. sure because I'm writing it all down. The only thing that I found that even hinted to one is a 20 second conversation that Six has with Miranda before they go off to try to save the day. <laughs> And she asks him, why were you in prison? Why? That was the best scene in the movie. It's the and only scene that showed any emotion. he talks about his father yeah. basically abusing him as a kid. Right. It was right. 20 seconds. That was one of the most emotional. Like, it could, it had most the most emotion, I would say. Right. But from the perspective of a plot point, it was terrible. It, oh, yeah. The, plot, the second plot point is supposed to reveal... For the, the entire plot, plot. Right. the entire plot, right? Not some character development of the character. You can tie it in closely, that character development plot point together, and that yeah. kind of goes as a combo. Like I think Gladiator did that when we talked about the it. Thing a is, bit. let's be honest. Let's be honest. You should already love the character way before the first, the second exactly. plot point. Otherwise, the climax means nothing because the there's fact, no emotional investment. Exactly. Like, the fact that we didn't uh, know even why he was in prison until the end of the movie right. is terrible. It's like also, I can't even root for the guy yet. Well, we can talk about Miranda's character later. But okay. Okay, uh, now no. going off of that, I want to go into Rotten Tomatoes a little bit. Okay. Um, because I want to talk about, first of all, the structure of the script and why it sucks. So yeah. this, okay. On the tomato meter, okay. I hope they the just... critics who rated this movie gave it yeah. a forty six percent rotten. So it's rotten. It's not certified fresh. It's okay. rotten at forty six percent. Didn't even make it halfway. That makes me feel all right. That's generous. Yes, <laughs> I know it is. Um, the fact that <laughs> to be dramatic, the fact yeah. that absolutely appalls me here. Mm. Guess what I've the audience score is. Boggled. Guess what the audience uh, I'm gonna guess somewhere in the mid 30s. They gave it a 91 freaking percent. What 91 percent? That makes me embarrassed to be a movie lover. What the hell? The fact that the audience loved it so much. 
That is that. Oh, that that, that hurts my heart. Oh, that it's really terrible. does. I cannot believe they because. Oh my gosh. Oh, anyway, the so it's intense. Okay, so critics forty six percent. I say all right. Should have been worse, I think, but all right. Audience score makes me want to cry. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, it, cool it was it is, was number two in um, Netflix when I watched it yesterday. Me too. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what the general consensus of this movie was, was, oh, where is it? I read it yesterday. Well, okay. In so many words, it mm-hmm. said this movie felt like a trailer that was way too overexplained for the trailer. Like of That's a, a great way to describe it. Just a um, trailer because it's just yeah. 2D exactly higher time exactly uh, um okay what's sad though because of the audience high score the audience reviews um it has 105 fresh reviews and 125 rotten so it's barely like it's almost half it's terrible i want to hear why they liked it exactly so <laughs> we're gonna read some of those okay yeah uh, one of the rotten reviews from a top critic is just it's a 200 million dollar snooze fest yeah, yeah. okay Pretty good. Definitely. Um, this person says all that effort and all that money should have paid for a better screenplay. Thank you. That's what we were saying. How exactly. hard like these people, granted, Hollywood's all about the money, but there's also people in there like, who understand story. It's funny. This last week I read that this movie was ranked as one of the highest movies that right, I did too. To make. And I, yeah. I was thinking that's gotta be great, you know. Yeah, like that's cast. why I was like, like, Oh, this this should be interesting to the do. cast, you know. Exactly, yeah. Um this person, negative review, negative review, says it's kind of like watching a movie that's a trailer for itself. Oh, okay, there it is. That's the one I was thinking of. Mm. Um, okay, this person says, I think they're looking for a series that could replace James Bond, but in order for that to happen, right. people need to want to see this one and the ones that come after. And I already know I don't Ooh, want to see the next one. That is just that's painfully honest because if you're the movie maker, you're like, ouch. But yes. also wake up call here, write oh. it different. You this know? is also another good one. There can be pleasure in empty calorie entertainment, especially in action films and reality TV tele- and reality television. Right. However, the sin becomes apparent when one misuses many of our best actors. <laughs> oh, yes. Dude, they really uh, are. Yeah. Like they so were... here's here's it's here's why I call it a cash grab when I describe it in two words. It's like many Netflix movies. They get Big name, A-list actors, like right. hey, Red Notice, The Rock, Gal Gadot, Ryan Reynolds. Okay, like three massive actors and then a horrible script and then right. they shove it out for a cash grab. The yeah. same with this one. They had And Armis, Chris Evans, and Ryan Gosling. Right. Ryan Gosling. Trash, trash <laughs> scripts. Oh, and Billy Bob <coughs> Thornton, apparently. Oh, they did way in. better in the, the Adam Project and it was just Reynolds. That was like a huge actor, right? Yeah, That's all I remember. exactly. Yeah, yeah, well, no. Um, uh, oh my gosh, what's her name? Gamora. She was also in it. Um, oh my gosh, what's her name? So oh my bad. gosh, Zoe Saldana. Yes. Oh, I she's love amazing. her. I totally she's forgot. She's amazing. Oh, mea, mea culpa. That's, that's yes. my bad. <laughs> my bad. So two people. Yeah, they're both awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um. So okay. So there's um. There's Rotten Tomatoes for you. Yeah. Um. IMDb gave it a. Oh, this is also kind of painful got a 6.5 out of 10 like, why <laughs> metacritic it's a 51 percent. pero por qué oh it's terrible yeah i don't Aye. know so this is what annoys me is the fact that we the audience are giving the movie producers permission to do this to us right that's a good way to put it we are giving yeah. it the attention it doesn't deserve yeah um and it just it's it, it's it's terrible yeah this is terrible i mean there's um, really because okay the thing that gets me the most because here's the deal we were talking me and uh well me and my room were talking yesterday <laughs> and here's the deal the main thing that gets me in this movie is the bad guy and like the antagonist slash protagonist comparison that's what gets me the most because let's be honest that's that that is a big part of the movie Right, it's supposed to be. It's it's it, based on the trailer and all the advertisement for this movie. It was supposed to be the biggest part of this movie. Yeah. The back and forth between right. two big actors who are right. the protagonist and antagonist. And here's the deal. So we were talking, and it was it was we we kind of broke it down to there are like two types of bad guys. Not not two types. There's way more, right? But just like every human is different, but we all have organs and a skeleton, like 
it's we're similar but we're also different it's like mm -hmm. that yeah. um but two basic species of bad guys if you will um you have the ones in the olden days who were like you know a sauron or or the emperor where they weren't introduced or they were but they were kind of in the background controlling everyone else right mm -hmm. where it was more will the character become like the bad guy Will Luke mm -hmm. turn to the dark side or will Frodo mm -hmm. keep the ring? That kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then yeah. now we have a lot more villains like the Joker or a Thanos who is, well, the Joker, not really, he's not trying to do good stuff, but Thanos who's trying to do good stuff and the Avengers are his bad guys because who would step in the face of someone trying to save the world? Mm -hmm. Obviously, they'd be the bad guy. That's mm -hmm. how Thanos sees it, right? Mm -hmm. So you got bad guys who genuinely want to do good but their minds are weird so they're going to do it in a weird way mm -hmm. or guys who are just evil at heart and will the good guy become like them right mm -hmm. and in this movie you didn't know anyone deep enough to even know their motive like they showed they showed um lloyd being which lloyd really <laughs> um they showed him know. Yeah. being a uh essentially just a jerk the entire a movie. psychopath right and like, in a sense right like uh, brutal and i'm thinking what, okay. what to touch on that real quick what annoyed me also was he was they hailed him as a psychopath you know before yeah. they even introduced him yeah um carmichael and his oh what is her name what, what was suzanne yeah carmichael and suzanne are talking yeah. she's telling him he's insane psychopath don't do this he 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 can't be handled and he's like you and he's like you gotta handle him you know he gets the job done yeah and they introduce him and he's he's uh torturing this dude after that like you you didn't get any more scared of him you actually kind of laughed at him like he right. was kind of a joke right. like i mean pumpkin cupcake right like who wrote these he, lines he's being all like like cute and sarcastic exactly. and all this stuff and it's like that that doesn't work like it, it might be actually really creepy if the guy had he's like dark reasons he's like a knockoff joker. joker like like, like a clown <laughs> yeah. version of a joker right like it's like it's, an actual it's, clown version of the joker exactly huh? yeah like somebody dressed up yeah. like a clown like it's it's terrible yeah um, the, his lines were corny you weren't threatened by him at all yeah um there was no like you didn't feel like any consequences of his actions would affect the characters. Right. Because well, they, yeah. it seemed like they were invincible. There was no and sense of danger. It's, you know? it's funny. They, I even yeah. knew, like I predicted Fitz would die before it happened because that's just how the story rolled, but right. I didn't care at all. Yeah, you're like, because oh, because it was die, like, well, of course like, he's yeah. gonna die getting yeah. out. Like it makes and then sense. It well, because the script was so predictable. His niece, yeah. Yeah. It's like you, you could just the entire thing. Um, even with Suzanne, I was like, Suzanne better not kill him because they need to save what shambles they have of a bad guy on good guy. Um, mm -hmm. And then she did. And I was like, that's it. I'm done. Because uh, I figured she would because she was so pissed at him. Um, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. plus, they, so obviously that that being the main issue I have with this movie would be the antagonist protagonist. I mean, a lot of other stuff was wrong with it too. Mm -hmm. But just... I the big the one word very small word that I go back to all the time when we talk about bad guys is why mm -hmm. you need to know why exactly exactly like, like even so say Thanos doesn't you don't know why he's so passionate about cutting the universe in half like like you don't know his childhood reasons for like wanting to deal with well they do explain it a little bit because they go you to also, they go to the planet and then he says, This is where you, I lived, and it was a paradise. And then it right, and then also destroyed. Titan. That's right, that's right. I totally forgot. On to Titan, um, yeah. Right. So, so they his do, home world, even his with, home even world with him, yeah, his home world, yeah. And he wants to what I love, I think this in my humble opinion, I'm not I don't even agree yet in any of this. Um, but I think that the best bad guys aren't bad guys at the beginning of the movie, mm. but they're forced to compromise. No, not they're forced to not compromise and they're driven well, to more extreme methods because think, people won't listen and they're so stoked on people listening to them exactly i think it's it's like what makes such a compelling bad guy like you said they're not necessarily bad at the beginning right but then through the course of the movie they make the choices that make them go that direction and the hero makes the choices that make them go that direction that's actually and then, and then they collide <laughs> I want to coin this phrase, and it's ironic because that's what I want to say. Uh, that's yeah. what I mean. I want mm -hmm. to say, how is the coin every time mm -hmm. we review a movie? Because the coin 
has two sides. One side is a protagonist, one side is the antagonist. And right. it is the same importance. You can't only have one side of a coin. It has two sides. And I think this is, that is one of the most important aspects of a movie, regardless even, I, I would say, and this is kind of a bold claim, but if the coin, the two sides of the coin mm. are really well written, you can save any movie, even if yeah. everything else kind of sucks. Well, because because if the if the two forces that incite the conflict throughout the movie are well written, well developed, you know the why for both of them, right? And they go at it. You will watch. Dude, it goes. Story, it goes into else is bad. human nature, right? There's mm-hmm. the old adage of the white and the black wolf inside of your uh, inside of your soul, right? Yes. Or basically, like like your like which one, you, whichever wolf you're feeding, whichever you of, feed will grow, right, and then right. that wolf will beat the other one. Yeah. Right. So I think that the best, in my humble opinion, the best bad guys and good guys start out at the same point, mm. because they have the same hurts. Mm. But they both choose to manage them in completely different ways, which lead them it's back like, to each other. It's so good. Right? It's like the story that that yeah. um, what is it's like a, it, it was a, an example, um, it's like so. There is there are two boys, they have a father, and their mm-hmm. father is an alcoholic. And yes, abusive. yes, 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 yes. One son, oh. one of the boys, grows up to be a police officer, incredibly successful. And the other one grows up to be an alcoholic and abuse like his father. Yeah. They had the same experiences. They decided how to react differently. That is how the antagonist, the protagonist should be at the beginning of the movie. And yeah. they, that's they a make, true they story. Make, they make their own choices. Oh, that's a it's, true story. It's a true story. There's, there's this guy. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome. I forget the name of the book, but he went to both. He said, and eerily enough, they gave the same answer. He said, why are you an alcoholic? Um, he and the alcoholic was like, "What else could I have done with what I was raised with?" And then the the whatever he became, the police officer, the, the really successful oh rich guy, gosh. right? He asked him the same question, and he was like, "What else could I have done with what I worked with?" Right? That's 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 powerful, right there. Like, yeah. Case in point, like even like you know, like yeah. so, you basically that should be that that is a very good starting point for, for mm-hmm. a antagonist and protagonist relationship where it's like. Mm-hmm. They both have the same thing hurts, but they choose to work with them different differently. Mm-hmm. And I think it's awesome when the antagonist, when the protagonist sees the demise of the antagonist. Oh my gosh. That, and is that, like, that could have been me. That's, but that's because, a great point. Yeah. And you know and what you like, just cool, said? You know? That even matches up with Thanos. Like, okay, we're using this as an example because right. Thanos, I think, is one of the most well written oh, bad guys yeah, of all time. Definitely. Um that even lines up with that. Thanos, half of his planet was destroyed. So what does he do? Or half the population was wiped out because of yeah. famine. What does he do? He decides to wipe out half the universe to save everybody. He's like, let me help what you. What do the Avengers do when half of their planet and the universe gets taken away? They get the stones to bring them back. Yeah. Same experience, different outcomes. Right. It's Dude, just, yes. Oh, it rings true. Like, let's and, get them back instead of let's keep this good. Let's keep it this good. Exactly. Thing, you know? So. Damn. It's powerful, and that's why I think Deep. the coin. I I think we we need to coin with that phrase. We we yeah. coined it as the coin. The coin of phrase. So <laughs> how is the coin in the movie? Like, like yeah. what does that mean? How is the protagonist and antagonist? How were they written? Did they have a why? You know, all that sort of thing. That in this movie, crazy. neither of them. Well, six had a little bit of a why, but it was very poor. Yeah, just Lloyd's why? why? Like, why was he the way he was? We don't know. Yeah. We we don't know at all. Which you need to know why the bad guy is being such a jerk. Like in this in exactly. this movie, in this instance, you need to know why. Otherwise, you don't give a crap. Mm-hmm. You know? Which I didn't, because I was like, why why is he doing this? They haven't cared to explain. Like, why mm-hmm. should I care to pay? And time? like you said, you know? like like so like villains say as like the Emperor in Star Wars or Sauron in Lord of the Rings. Right. They're kind of removed in a sense. Right. It's more about the main character. You right? see their consequences that are terrible. Right. right. You see what they're doing, and it's yeah. really bad. And so, yeah. because of those things, you fear them, and you're you're apprehensive, and and you you look at them as an entity that could cause harm to the main characters. Right. And if you do it the other way, with a story that maybe isn't so, um, you know, maybe maybe large scale as a star wars story or a lord of the rings right the character 
needs to be more intimate in the sense of you need to know the why like you need to know this character as well as the protagonist in a certain sense right which is why i think i think we got great examples here we have lord of the rings and we have the dark knight right Mm. you got the dark knight you have the joker harvey he plays a big uh big role there too Mm -hmm. and batman right and then you have sauron and frodo which let's be honest like they didn't like because Sauron is so freaking powerful and removed, that's that therein lies the poetry of the story that is a mm-hmm. hobbit and a, essentially a, a Satan, right? And they don't necessarily have interaction, right. but all of Sauron's hands, his forces, right. are going after Frodo like right. crazy. And with all all that being said, at the very end, Frodo fails. Yeah. He chooses to keep it, the ring, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So that's what's awesome about the story is that he if it weren't for if it weren't for other forces involved too you know he has to like live with that shame or whatever but like yeah essentially but then you have then you have the dark knight right then you have the joker who's essentially just a lawless i hate the world because i hate the world because of stuff that happened to me right Mm -hmm. where he's i would say as a bad guy he's the opposite of thanos because he wants to destroy the world for stuff that happened to him Mm -hmm. whereas thanos wants to save the world for stuff that happened to him you know Mm -hmm. so they're both villains because they're both doing horrible things to get to that goal mm-hmm. but they have very different motives you know mm-hmm. yeah Which, ah, villains are so complex dude mm-hmm. and good guys too you know i think we need more good guys who are and that's kind of what's coming up is um well in more and more cinema these days it's like you good guys who are actually struggling like mm-hmm. struggling with not becoming the guy they're trying to defeat like they're still powerful and they're not a doormat mm-hmm. but they're also battling with the with the human instinct of wanting to lash out and destroy just like the bad guy's doing right exactly and they got to do it they got to defeat the bad guy in a way that doesn't compromise their values but also defeats the bad guy effectively you know Mm -hmm. and therein lies the balance in the story and the the struggle and the interest and the conflict where yeah it just carries throughout the whole movie yeah which is what the audience wants to see exactly yeah. And when it's when there's no backing for that conflict, the the conflict is terrible, and right. there is a lack of conflict. And the audience, mm-hmm. like all the comments we just read, yeah, they're terrible. Um. So now, okay, before we move on to maybe some other things, I want to read a couple of the 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 comments that that like the movie. Okay, let's see what. Um, <laughs> okay. It is a big, noisy, explosive adrenaline rush. A live action spin on that old Mad magazine comic spy mm. versus spy and about as deep so the, this favor? person this person <laughs> is that admitting that it's not deep at all right but they apparently like the ride right they were along for the ride um okay chris evans ryan gosling and danish fight for your attention i don't know what danish stands for maybe they're talking about another actor huh. um fight for your attention the plot is cliche, but the Russo brothers deliver a film packed with action, charismatic actors, and beautiful locations. Dude, that was the Russo brothers. I know. I was really disappointed. I they're like, I thought this was terrible for them. No, dude, they make good movies. They made Endgame. Dude, oh, that really yeah. that is disappointing. My yeah, goodness, I saw that. I was like, no way. That's terrible. Okay, how did the one... director of the Last Jedi make Knives Out and the Russo brothers make this one? Exactly right. What the hell? Why was which, Knives Out good? Which makes me just say again, cash grab. Netflix oh. wanted them to make a cash grab, and so what they were shame. hired to do it. That's so disappointing. Um, mm. Okay, so that's it for comments. Um, so to wrap up though, since we are had ten minutes left, yeah, we got um, the damn timer going. There are a few things that really put the nose in the coffin for me. Um, one, I want to touch on Tamil, that random character. Yeah. Who suddenly appeared. Is that his became... name or is that his ethnicity? Because that's an no. ethnicity. In a oh, language. it is. They called him. Well, maybe that. Maybe they were just calling. That him. was my Tamil friend. Yeah. Because remember okay. in Benedict Society when uh, Rhonda speaks Tamil, and Sticky. Oh, talks. okay. Yeah. So we don't even have a name for this. We don't guy. Even do. We don't have a name. Okay, yeah. so that makes it yeah. even worse. Yeah. So this guy comes out of nowhere halfway through the movie and becomes such a linchpin that the story is changed because of this person. Right. We don't even have a name. He yeah. suddenly appears. He gives the main characters incredible trouble, which unless the character is all, unless the, so you don't have a character interact with the main characters 
and have such a big impact unless they are impact unless player. They're impact- they can- you're not allowed to change the story unless you're important. Exactly. That sounds so obvious, but so when this guy not- shows up in the hospital and beats the crap out of both of them and steals the hard drive mm-hmm. and gets away. Which please, a hard drive hasn't that been done a million times? I know. Anyway, I was yeah. very disappointed in the fact that I was like, okay, this guy has no backstory. He's suddenly yeah. here halfway through the movie, over halfway through the movie, I think right. it was. And he's he's becoming the main character. We don't even right. have a name. And then he suddenly converts. Gives the hard drive back with the excuse of these people are gonna kill a girl. They're not the people, they're not they're not the people I thought they were. Right. When he just helped these After. people butcher like a right. hundred police officers in Prague. Yeah. Right. So apparently he thought they were good people until then. Right. Even like, after oh, that. So that that's that's where I draw the line. It's like exactly you, you got a really weird line. And then like, the kicker, the real kicker is this character just disappears. He doesn't die. We don't know what happens to him. I don't I I don't recall ever what happens to him after yeah, he gives either. after he gives the hard drive away to Miranda, he's gone. Yeah, that that was you one of what? the nails in the coffin for me. It just, the entire it was yeah, and so bad. Right, for me, the nails in the coffin would be the um because you know I I am a sucker for scenes. I don't care how violent or action packed the movie is or how dramatic or not. You need quiet scenes mm. where two or like three max or in the case of the crews more but they're sitting down in a quiet space reflecting emotionally on the events or their past and the theme music kicks in you yes. know you need moments like that in movies in order yes. to really just connect you with the audience right mm-hmm. and make them especially before a, a big final showdown which they were trying to do i think in the second plot point in the the vet hospital yeah. um but like they had a little a little taste of it in the car when they pulled up there was like 10 seconds of silence and i was i leaned forward i told them i was like quiet this is this is good a good scene right yeah and then they didn't have a scene there mm. and then they they finally had one in the, in the hospital but it was super short mm-hmm. um which that flashback was really good it was the best part of the movie but mm. i'm thinking it was way too late cinematography the shots could have been way different you could have showed which they did at the end thankfully show the dad doing said horrible things right at the very end of the movie right which when, it doesn't mean anything at that point it doesn't mean anything at that point it's like yeah it's already it's like it's like the, it's, there's a sales funnel right mm-hmm. and you're trying to get the audience to give little yeses throughout the funnel and then you pitch the sale the product exactly the end, which they is like my pitch, movie they tried you know? to pitch the product with no sales funnel as right. you say with no yeses in between right. and just right there right at the end and you're you're thinking wait they're showing this now like it was right. there was there was such a lack of continuity and like you said spineless in this there was no structure Right. There was no Not spineless spine as in like, oh, they were cowards. It was as in there's there no was no structure. spine in this there's movie. No, no it's just a, a sludge of skin. Right? And, and 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 then on top of it all, um, the character Miranda, as I said, I wanted to touch on her a little bit. Um, she plays no real purpose. So we have no idea why she's helping she sex. Actually, we have been no somebody. idea who she is. You know? Like she 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 has no motive to help. Yeah. Like, like there's not even like a, a, a romance between them. Like there's not anything, maybe do it because hey, she likes the guy a little bit, but but they didn't right. even do that. There's no right. reason for her to be doing what she's doing, except for the fact that she she like for some reason sees what's going on and decides to help when yeah. she, she's throwing away her career to do it. Right. And to uh, to boot, she says nothing but get her butt kicked the whole movie. Yeah. They didn't hey. even make her <laughs> very um capable of helping every right. fight scene. She barely gets out of there alive. Right. I'm like, guys, why are you doing this? In the she show really room? gets beat up. And yeah. it's kind of like, even in this, if, if they would have taken a few seconds in the vet scene, right? Mm-hmm. Second plot point, right? <laughs> yeah, to, second plot point. To, exp- like, maybe, I, I figure I knew, I said, okay, he just gave his, his backstory. The way mm-hmm. she responds can bring them closer or can bring them apart. Mm-hmm. It was powerful. And then they just cut the they, they cut the scene. They didn't make her say anything. And I'm thinking, you could have sealed them together before their final battle so is, well if she would have been like, I understand or something, or or yeah. I I empathize with you to some degree. And then he like could have like 
there could have been an, an eye thing going on. Or maybe even next. why she could she could have said that's why I'm helping you because I had the same thing happen to me. Exactly. When I was like, so you know why she's her. helping him and they're brought right. closer. Oh, Something why? Like that. Why is oh. she there risking her life? Like, does she just love her job that much? Oh, I mean, but like gosh. you said, she's giving away her yeah, career anyway. Exactly. It's, okay. So oh, sheesh. since we like, have three and a half minutes left, I want okay. to wrap up my comments at least with okay. one thing that was in the movie. Okay. I think this I think this sums up the movie beautifully. So mm-hmm. when they are escaping the mansion at the end, mm-hmm. and six is and Fitz gets shot. Mm-hmm. He says, you know, he, he's trying to get six to go on without him. Mm-hmm. This is what he says. He says, I'm out, get her gone. When it probably should have been, I'm gone, get her out. And I think that's the hell. I think that sums up the movie beautifully. Everything disjointed, everything wonky and warped. I'm gone, I'm out, get her gone. Instead of I'm gone, get her out. You know, I just, that's how I want to close my comments on this. (laughs) That is Um, good. It just was to me, it was, I, I would, I would pause the movie and laugh out loud at some things. It was just atrocious. Right. In right. my personal opinion, it was atrocious and it did not survive the gauntlet. It did not. It sp- got beat to death. <laughs> it barely, it tried, it, it like put a foot out to step onto the gauntlet and everyone was like, exactly. wait, what? what? <laughs> Is Why this a joke? Here? Exactly. You just go away. So they, they, um, they just kind of went, they went around the gauntlet and just, and then put him in prison or something because he didn't even get to run it, you know? Exactly. That was okay yeah so for i guess my closing comments um i would say that a bad guy a good guy relationship in a movie is supposed to represent the interior conflict of every individual human on this planet between good and evil right mm. and when you don't have that a story can't exist because th- every human should watch a movie and and see the bad guy and good guy and kind of do a little dance between in their mind and their morals should be questioned, but then it should, the movies should finish with their morals stronger, right? Exactly. Because they went through the question, right? Yeah. It shouldn't be the good guy is just this white knight. Who's just awesome the entire time. Mm-hmm. It should be the good guy falters. And so does the, the audience. They're like, Holy crap. You know, it should mm-hmm. be a palm tree, you know, rather than a telephone pole. I don't or know. Like the bend, but not break, you know, that exactly that whole, that whole uh, <coughs> idea and because yeah, it no. bends the the brain then makes you stronger exactly because it's like it's like it's like working out the muscles hurt and it becomes stronger so it doesn't get hurt again mm-hmm. right so you you need to have that that moment in a movie where your 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 heart and like not even it's not all movies have to be that deep i'm, I'm not saying that mm-hmm. but you got to have some semblance of the human element and human interaction so that's those are my gotcha. beautifully said i agree all right <laughs> yeah. thank no, you thank for you. joining us this week <laughs> Join yeah. us next time and uh, like, comment, and let us know what you thought. Let us know what us. you thought and what you want to see us uh, exactly. either tear apart or build up based on how we like the movie. Exactly. We will see you next time. Ciao. All right. Ciao.